Hey, hey, y'all. Insight number three here. Uh, you're sitting in the sun because it's nice and warm and it's pretty cold here um, still as we're in lockdown again. Yay. Um, so we're in section 93 this week. Um, yes, I have my pretty scriptures here full of Becky Higgins um, stickers because they're just so cute. Uh, so verses 11 to 13, I digress there, actually 11 to 14, but we're going to cover 11 to 13 here. Um, now I already talked about the which John it would be, but this is particularly John the Baptist talking about how Jesus grew up and um, when he got baptized, that kind of thing. So that goes through that um, and how and how that worked. Now go, oh, we're just looking at 11 to 13, but this starts off in 6 and goes right through oh, easily. John talk could be John talking for up to about verse 40 because that's where it kind of switches but specifically this John talking about John 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 talks it goes through to about 22 um, but 11 starts off and I John bear record that I beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth even the spirit of truth which came and dwelt in the flesh and dwelt among us and I John saw that he received not of the fullness at the first but received grace for grace and he received none of the fullness at first, but continued from grace to grace until he received a fullness. Now that is the same for us. A fullness doesn't happen all at once. Sometimes it might feel like we have a fullness because we had a big rush of it, but it's not the complete fullness. Fullness happens a little bit at a time. We might get big chunks, but generally it's precipitous. It happens over time. Gathers. Um, but how does grace, in this instance really, how does grace allow you to receive the fullness? Like I said, you don't get it all at once. So grace allows you time to do it in what suits you best. Um, I put down here, because our brains are in many ways still in infancy, uh, our spiritual brains in, the, in this life, they're very much still as a little child. Um, grace allows us time and understanding to grow at our own pace, not by someone else's measure. Uh, the only way we're ever getting measured is against who we were yesterday and are we, are, are we a little better than we are today. Now the, the increments in this are tiny, immeasurable almost, but they're there. Um, we are not expected by heaven to have this all figured out the first try, so don't feel bad. And anyway, we're big advocates around here about not focusing on what happened, but what we're doing now to make it better. So don't feel bad about it, just make commitments to do it better. Um, line upon line, precept upon precept, grace by grace. God's kindness and love as we advance all at different paces to receive that fullness because it will happen differently for every single one of us in different ways, different times, um, and that different fullnesses too. Uh, there's the fullness of the gospel, but there's also fullness of the other things in here like light, glory, power, grace, truth, joy, and knowledge. I might have a fullness of joy some days, and other days I feel like I have a fullness of knowledge, and yet I know that I'm way off from that. I don't think I'll ever get a fullness of knowledge in this life. And yet maybe a fullness of knowledge is simply knowing that I'm not going to get a fullness of knowledge. But that could be called wisdom. So it's interesting. Um, and I don't think any of them are complete in this life. But I do have a fullness of joy, I think. Although some days I still get sad. It's a different thing. It's not about being happy joy is about knowing knowing with a complete certainty that mm. our purpose who we are have self-worth and know where we're going um, it's all around the planet salvation it's a beautiful thing um, we can talk I could talk about that for hours probably on a live because there'll be questions but anyway um, Elder Bruce C and Marie K Hafer now they're awesome they were in our Pacific area and presidency for a while. Uh, Elder Hafen is an absolute sweetie and his wife Marie is oh, kindest, sweetest lady. Uh, but they said in the book that they wrote together uh, we grasp meaning in the midst of contraries. So when there's something contrary to what we believe or how we feel that's how we grasp meaning. Um, that's where we start questioning things and find answers. Uh, thus only those who have lived in the depths carved out of their hearts by tribulation can have room enough for their hearts to contain and truly comprehend the fullness of joy that awaits them. So really only those have been through the kind of struggles that life gives us, the kind of heart-wrenching, soul-destroying it feels, 
um, those kind of things. Do we become able to actually comprehend the fullness of joy that's going to come? Um, you know, I, I think I've been there. I've been in some pretty dark places where you just, there's, there's no hope other than Christ. So, you know, I would love it if none of you had to experience that, if I could take that away from you, but you need to find that in your own trials, and everyone's trials are different. So you're going to find that heart-wrenching thing in something that someone else is not going to, and don't let them down on you for that, because... They're going to say, well, that's not much of a trial. And you're going to be like, well, it was to me. And you're going to feel a bit sad about it. Um, but that's not up to them. That's your journey, your pathway, and how that's going to work for you. Um, it's where you're going to find it yourself, which we all have to do. No one can fill our own lamps. we got to. If that makes sense. So that's kind of beautiful. But it's lovely there that we could see that even Jesus received grace for grace. Even... At six months, he wasn't spouting the Sermon on the Mount, was he? It took time. I'm sure he probably had a great head start, but he needed to, to be who he is. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't have the same opportunities to be just as committed to the gospel. Um, yeah, so think about that. But take that message this week because it's certainly needed, I think, at this time where there's so much awful stuff in Afghanistan people there um there's still covid rampant everywhere and everyone is struggling with so many different things whatever they are to you they're not small to you so keep in mind even jesus grew grace by grace and it takes time so keep at it cool i'll see you over at insight number four